different angle on the bench to start this video because I want to show you the kitty swinging its paw and it needs to be turned towards the solar panel and it needs to be on the bench to actually operate. But here we go. That's us established it quite noisy swinging kitty. Let's take it to bits. It's a nice little thing because it reaches the end of travel and then the magnet or something hits will find having to open it up and it makes a loud clacking noise. Now, the thing I'm wondering about this is, is it like the typical solar flower type thing? Or is it going to be better because I'm looking for a start at one, two, three screws here and four screws here. So it's not like it's just cheap and glued together. And the Chinese take these very seriously. They love their magic happy luck luck swinging cat type things because they believe it brings them fortune that's a that's the theory anyway you see them in all the sort of chinese shop windows really big ones as well that are quite neat inside and deep down i'm hoping this one has a better circuitry because there is good circuitry and there is not so good circuitry now i have to be careful here just in case uh, this comes too far it's a blob that's almost disappointing it's a blob that's just basically Stuck on. Oh, it's got a screw holding it on. Okay, let's take the rest of the pussy apart. And then, I shall try and find a rough guide to the circuitry they used to use in these because it was complex. They've simplified it down. The blob makes things a bit too simple. It actually spoils it a bit because the circuitry used to be quite fascinating. It separates apart. Oh, they're quite a big coil, quite a big coil. That's uh, bigger than I was expecting. Where's the capacitor? I'm not seeing the capacitor, unless the capacitor's tucked under here somewhere. Oh, that's strange. There's usually a capacitor to store a charge. Oh, there it is. It's a tiny little uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitor. That is minute. And the mechanism itself is really just, it's a weight with a, and they've added a little nut up here as extra weight. Can that be unscrewed? No, it's kind of jammed or glued in position. And it's got a magnet underneath. Right, tell you what, one moment please. Okay, let's zoom down and take a look at the rough layout of this. I've taken another one apart. It's quite neat because its coil here is just a plastic form of the wire wound around it. Some of the other ones I've seen, this is also a plastic form, but some I've seen have the wire wound and it's been, been between two plates, but bound together with glue and then the plate's been removed, just meaning it's a bare coil. I mean, they really are just making it as cheap as possible. This one also has a blob chip, but it's notable that the capacitor here is 470 microfarad. Now, I tried measuring the capacitor in this one and it is in circuit, which messes things up, but it actually measured at 15 microfarad. So uh, the closest standard valve to that is 16. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, but here is the layout of that circuit board. Not much to see. There's a lock going under this blob, blob chip. It's got the coil at this side. It's got the sword panel at this side and the capacitor there. And in operation, it slowly charges this capacitor up and it reaches a threshold that if there's no swinging pendulum, it will either just, uh, it will trigger and it will, trigger the coil anyway and it will kick it, but discharge that capacitor in the process. Or, if the pendulum is swinging, as the voltage across this capacitor rises, as the pendulum approaches, it just, as it gets up to just about the point it's going to trip, it just nudges it over the edge and gives the pendulum a kick. The circuitry, and this is just a rough guide. This is not a circuit that you could just doodle this down, connect a coil and it would work. This is just a rough representation of something along the lines of the old Kundo clock pendulums, which is what these are based on. So the way it works here, I noticed that uh, there are only effectively three connections, the positive metered across here from the uh, input to the output. So I'm guessing it's bridged straight across and that's kind of what I've shown here. So that would be a PNP transistor. Normally these arrangements have one PNP and one NPM. One of the transistors is used, well, they're both effectively used to turn each other on at one point. But here's the process of what might happen. This transistor, when it is going to pull the coil to positive, but to, to energize it, but to actually turn on, it needs its base to be pulled down to the negative rail. And that's what this transistor does here. So this capacitor, here charges up from the solar panel and 
as I mentioned earlier, there's two ways it can happen. It can be a voltage threshold. Now, I'm not sure what they use. I'm guessing they're going to use a quite fancy voltage threshold in the blob chip, but it could just be a bias resistor internally to the NPN transistor. And if it, as soon as this uh, starts conducting, it will start turning that on. That coil will start being energized. And in doing so, because the transistor's pulled that up to the positive rail, it will then provide positive signal down to the base of the NPN transistor to turn it on. And they basically, it's a self-triggering uh, system. Um, the downside of this thing here, and this is what's screwing me up here, there would have to be a capacitor in here to limit that so that after it had gone taken up X amount of charge, then this capacitor would stop driving the, the base of this transistor. At the, I'm not sure the standard old Kundo clocks, they had that capacitor, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, or Kundo or Kundo, a German style of clock, I believe. Uh, very stylish clocks. They went from electromechanical pendulums to electronic. But in these, uh, I'm not sure what they're doing because I'm guessing there's a lot more in here. I'm guessing it's a little timer chip and everything with voltage thresholds. Uh, but uh, in normal operation, yeah, that would charge up and it would trigger and it would fire the pulse itself. I've included this back EMF diode to protect this transistor. Basically speaking, when that triggered, it would pull this end of the coil positive uh, while well, that was negative, and then when it, that transistor turned off the, and the field collapsed, this would go negative, that would go positive, and it would find a path through that diode to avoid a voltage spike destroying that transistor. If, on the other hand, the pendulum was swinging, the voltage would build up across this capacitor, and this uh, bias would gradually increase in this transistor until the point that the pendulum, just as it swung past, it would just nudge it over the edge and it would actually cause it to trigger and it would give the pendulum a kick at that point. So it is basically a self-resonant system. It knows when to hit the pendulum just as it passes. And the faster the pendulum's passing, the more of a kick it gets. But this, as I say, this is not what's in these chips. I'm not sure it's in these chips because it's evolved greatly. You can find some of the clock pendulums, the quartz clock pendulums, with discrete circuitry. I'm pretty sure I've reverse engineered some of that in the past. Uh, one of them was based on the uh, the flip flop, but it had two magnets, so it actually triggered on the way past and latched the circuit in our direction. But they're interesting. This one is better made than the others that I've seen. The cheapy swinging hula girl type ones just have the simple arrangement like this. This one, the quality, the construction, they have taken it more seriously uh, with a fairly big coil up here, possibly to compensate for a, a lower value of capacitor, if it is a lower value of capacitor. And this thing, if you include this screw here, has a total of eight screws holding it together. And it's like they've gone to fair length of effort. It's a fairly powerful magnet and they've also got a little metal stud above it for weight. And then they've counterbalanced it with this nut, which might be tunable. Or they've just basically added an extra nut, and if it needed more balance, they could have added more on top of that. It's all just been designed for optimization of manufacture. But it's neat. Uh, it's one of the better quality ones I've seen apart, but really I need to find one that has the circuitry in it to reverse engineer it, because these blobs, these are no good. We want to see circuitry, but it was still well worth taking apart.